Hi everyone, the Legends Fanboy here again, and today we are continuing our Summer of Genesis videos. I will be reading, today we are reading discuss, and discussing chapters 10, 11, and 12. Pretty sure. <clears throat> so open your Bibles. And I will I will start reading. I think we read up to eighteen. Yesterday. Oh oh no, we're on nine. We're on ten. We're on ten. So, open your Bibles and we'll start reading. Open your Bibles to chapter 10 and I will start reading now. Pause the video if you don't have your Bible with you and you want to grab it really quick and open to chapter 10 and read, read along. And I will start reading right now. Now, this is the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jehep. Je and sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Je Jehep were Gomer, M Magog, Magog Ma Madi. J Javin, Tubal, Message, and Tyrus. I I I apologize. Yeah, for butchering these names. Yeah, I'm bad at this. Okay, we're on, we're on verse 3. <laughs> the sons of Gomer were Ash, Ashkenaz, Ripat, Rip. rip Rifath, I don't know. Um, and Tagmar. Uh, the sons of Javan. Of J okay, Javan, Javan. We're gonna go with Javan. Where uh, oh, Elisha. Tarshish, Kitim, and Dodden, Doddenim. From the from these the coastline peoples of the Gentiles were separated into their lands. Everyone according to his land, according to his language. According to their families in their nation into their nations, the sons of Ham were Cush Mizraim Put and Canaan. 
I don't know what this floating lowercase e has to do with stuff. That's we're on verse six. The sons of Cush were Seb Seba Havela Havela Sabata Rem 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 Okay what Sabata and the sons of Rem Rum uh, was were Sheba and Dedan. Cush begot Nimrod. He be he began to be a mighty one on on earth on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, in the beginning of his king of his kingdom. Was Babel era Akkad and Kana Kana Okay, we're just going to pretend that's the name in the land of Shinar. From the land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh. I think that's how that's spelled. Rehoboth. Er. Kalaha. And twelve resin between Nineveh and Kalaha, that is the principal city in Mizraim begot Ludum and in Meheb. The Hebim left to him. Okay. Path Rushim and Cash. From whom came the Philistines and Kephtorium. Canaan begot Sidon, his, his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebsud, the Amorite, and the your guest site. The Hint, the Hevite, the Archite, the Sinite, the, the Arvadite, the Samarite, the Hem, the Hamahite, Afterward, the family of the Canaanites were dispersed, and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon. As you go toward Ger, as far as G Giza, I'm I'm gonna assume it's Giza. But it's probably not. It's spelled G A 
ZA. Then, then as you go toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Edmha, and Zebulim, as far as Lasha, there were the sons of Ham according to their families. According to their languages and in their lands and in their nations. And children were born also of also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Jeh the elder, the sons of Shem were Elam, Asher, Asher, Ephraxed, Lud, Lud, it's Lud, and Aram, the sons. Were Uz, Hul, Gather, and Mesh. Of Afraxed begot Salah, and Salah but begot ever. To Eber were born two sons. The name of of one was Pled Plague. For in his days of the earth were was divided. His brother's name was Jokatan. Jokatan begot. Mm, on the loaded Selehef has a ram has a ev Jera had a ram. Uzla, Uzla, De, 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 Obal, Ab, Ab, Menhel, Sheba. Ofer, Havalia, Jobab, all these were the sons of Jokin. Oh, oh, Jokin. And their dwelling place was from Mesha as you go towards Ze Zephha. Zephaha The mountains of the east the mountain of the east th these were the sons of Shem according to their families according to their languages in their lands according to their nations these were the families of the sons of Noah according to their generations and the nations and from these the nations were divided on the earth after the flood.
Um, like the this is the like that was a passage describing the the generations that followed the sons of of Noah and and like the territories that they established and that we like hear about in judges like about the territories like the Canaanites and the Amorites that were established in these generations we hear about a lot in in the book of Judges which we've been going through and we're on I think we just finished the Deborah stuff and the Midnights have conquered it now that's where we're at right now so next video in the Judges Bible study we will be telling the story of Gideon so that's where we're at there just kind of like connecting like showing significance um of certain locations and now uh, we are now we are getting and that's the end of chapter 10 um like though we might not always like find like deep theological importance in all the genealogies, it is important that we have them. It's kind of like like it verifies statements, and like there's some important genealogies in New Testament that we will actually be discussing later on in this series this summer when we go into stuff well we have already kind of talked about it with um like the covenants with noah last video and then um and probably in the next few weeks yeah, on um, in chapter in chapter twenty. Well, oh, actually, in um, in. Chapter 14 will be, actually, it's, chapter 13 will be introduced to the, to the, to Abraham. And then, in a few other, in the next few chapters, we'll hear about the, um, the covenant that God made with Abraham. And then that covenant would be expanded and and kind of made more specific in the covenant of um, in the Davidic covenant, which is first mentioned in I think Second Samuel. But we'll we'll get to we'll get to that in like the additional stuff. After we do, after we finish going through and discussing Genesis, we'll we'll touch on some other topics such as the Davidic covenant and stuff like that. Okay, now now we're on chapter eleven, and I will start reading now. Oh, the promise to Abram it, or Abraham is on chapter 12. So we will read that today. But we, we still got chapter 11 first. 
to read and discuss, and then we will close the the video out with reading and discussing chapter twelve, where we talk about Ab the promise made to David. I mean to to Abram Abraham. Now the whole world had one language and one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed from the east and that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had ass asphalt for motor motor. And they said, Come let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth, of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down, and and they're confused. Their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them ab abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, the name is called Babel because. There the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot. The fact said two years after the flood, after he begot the fact said Shem lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. The fact said lived 35 years and begot so after he begot so the fact said lived 400 years. 403 years and begat sons and daughters. So lived 30 years, then begot ever. After he begot ev ever, so lived for 430 years and begot sons and daughters. Ever lived thirty four years and begot plague after he begot plague. Ever lived four hundred and thirty years and begot sons and daughters. Plague lived thirty years and begot Rue. He begot Rue. And Plug lived 209 years and begot sons and daughters. Ru lived 32 years and begot Sarug. He begot Sarug and lived 207 years and begot sons and daughters. Sarug lived 30 years and begot. 
Nahon after he begot Nahorn, Surug lived 200 years and begot sons and daughters. Nahorn lived 29 years and begot Terra. After he got Terra, Nahorn lived 119 years and begot sons and daughters. Now Torah lived 70 years and begot Abram. Nahor and, and Haran. This is the genealogy. This is the genealogy of Terah begot. Abram, Nahor, and Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father, Terah, in, in his native land, in Ur of the Ch Chaldeans. Then Abram and Nahor took wives. The names of Abram's wife was Sariah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Malachi, Michal, the, the daughter of Haran. The father of Mal Malachi and the father of Isaac of Issachar. It's not Isaac. I'm sorry. Um, but Sarai uh, was barren. She had no no child, and to her took his son, Abram, and his grandson, Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, yeah, his son, Abram's, his son, Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there many, dwelt there, so the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Like this, this talks about Shem's descendants and Terah's and before that, we got the story of the Tower of Babel, and that the um, significance of that, like it talked about how they all spoke the same language until that point, and he did that in the way of of confusing them, and I get comes across like he did that in a way of humbling them. And like Babel is is a word used like babbling is used for describing what someone is saying that that makes no sense to us. That like someone might often say, Oh, that they were babbling like it was like you could tell that they were talking or at least trying to, but you didn't quite understand what was being said. Like you might, or like it seems incoherent. You might say like, oh, they were babbling. Prom, now we're on chapter 12.
Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make, make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who And I will curse those, I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seven was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sariah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people from the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the, the Turbanus tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west. And uh, uh, I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. To, so Abram joined, journeyed going on still toward the south. Abraham, Abram, oh, that, that's the start of the next section. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there. For the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when, when he was close to entering Egypt, he said, Sarai, his wife, indeed I mean, indeed I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance, therefore it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they let you live. Please say, You are my sister. It may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. So it was when Abram came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. And the, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep, ox, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh 
and his house with great plagues because Sariah, Abram's wife, and the Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this? Have you done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she was? She is my sister. I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Um, there's we see this multiple times how God uses Egypt as like temporary refuges for for God's people. Like we see it here where where God had sent Abram through Egypt as well as with um with the Israelites coming and to Egypt and being helped through Joseph during the seven years of famine. And then we see Joseph and Mary after the after the birth of Christ when Herod had the soldiers go out and kill all the baby boys. Um the angel appeared to them in the night and told them to flee to Egypt. And they stayed there for a few years until God had told them that they needed to return to Israel. Um, and like there's a few times where you see plagues. There's this time and then the story of Moses where you hear about plagues. Um, there's a few more in in this story with with the Pharaoh's involvement, um, like you see it a lot of parallels can be drawn to the um the sailor the uh the people that Jonah was traveling with on the boat, um, how like the storm had started going, and like they realized that it it was because God was mad at Jonah, and, and like how Jonah could have drowned, but instead he was swallowed whole by a fish. Um, which, which made it so, like, he would be easier able to come back and be delivered from that situation. So even in God's pun, like, through people like Abraham, and later you see it with David, um, God, God didn't use people to fulfill his plan because in the Old Testament, because they were perfect and righteous. He used them because they were still faithful to him. And though they were punished, God still, still held them in high regard. Um, and, and still used them to do many great things. And there's a lot of examples in that, like New New Testament. There's there's amazing examples of this, both the Old Testament and New Testament. In the Old Testament, you have people like Abraham and Moses and David are like three main ones that people mention. And then um, in the New Testament, like 
a lot of a lot of the people Jesus went to and recruited of the twelve disciples were people that Israelites didn't necessarily think all that great of. Like um like John or Matthew. Like some of the people that Jesus called to follow him were tax collectors, um, Mary Magdalene. It is like heavily implied that she might have been a prostitute, and like we see in the Old Testament with with Rahab, um, how they used like Rahab was a prostitute, and she. She, God used her to help protect the Israelite spies when they when they needed to spy on Jericho and spy on the city of Jericho. So throughout the Bible and and with my own testimony, um, and I'm sure with other people you know, God doesn't use us because we're perfect or have it all figured out. He uses the faithful and and when we screw up he, through Jesus Christ we, we have that grace and can be forgiven. And in the Old Testament we see that that I guess there were certain punishments earthly punishments and worldly punishments say that people experience like Jesus, like David lost his, the first son he had with Bathsheba, as well as like troubles within during his time ruling and and the Israelites and, and Judah, they were temporarily taken over by the Babylonians and the, and the Syrians. But they would eventually be delivered by the by the Persians out of that situation. Um, so through that stuff, and like Moses was due to Moses's disobedience, he wasn't able to enter the promised land with the the sons of Is the children of Israel. But he was able to. He still was able. He still did great things, for the, in the pursuit of expanding God's people. Like, I he was a person leading the Israelites through the establishment, of the. Of the Ten Commandments, and. The ceremonial laws in Leviticus and the different types of sacrifices and what like what the original versions of fellowship should look like and and those laws and and like being used to establish the church. That would be used up into the new the New Testament. Those traditions of the burnt offerings and stuff would be established by Moses. And I think so God even though we sin against him and make mistakes, God can still use us in great and in wonderful ways to expand his kingdom if we are willing to continue to follow him and try to continue to grow in our relationship with him and learn from our mistakes. God shows us mercy and and gives us more opportunities to do ministry and and fulfill the Great Commission. With that being said, may God be with you, and see you next time. Bye.